Uh, I think Dubai also has some aspects that warrant praise, and it doesn't seem to get it, probably because it doesn't speak up on its behalf like it should. But um, Dubai is, is a pragmatic place, I think, in a region that's known for dogmatism. Uh, it stays out of politics as much as it can. It stays friendly at the same time with Washington and Tehran, uh, which is a, a, not so easy to do. Uh, it's, a, it's foreign relations, I think, are very, very deft uh, and admirable. Um, it's, uh, Dubai's success has had tons of spillover benefits for this region, uh, which it doesn't seem to get uh, much credit for. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I think it's this project here that we're, uh, we're amid here in, in Dubai has got a better chance of anything else than anything else of bringing stability to this region. And it's also a rare beacon of religious and ethnic tolerance, I think, than, than uh, it welcomes everyone, really, as long as you work, uh, which I think is its most stunning achievement. Um, you, you don't see that uh, covered that much, but I think it's a really important point. So. So what can Dubai do to imp improve its treatment in the Western press? This is uh, kind of what we came here to discuss. Um, I think part of the problem is, is, is the character of the government here. Uh, it, it, Dubai has some formal institutions, but they're pretty weak, really. Um, and the government has become less institutionalized recently. Uh, you know, for, for example, the, the Executive Council was uh, in the midst of some structural reforms of the government that have been stopped. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, it was forming uh, more institutional structures here that, uh, that doesn't seem like it's going to go forward. And, and actually, the government seems to have taken a, perhaps a step back in that sense that its um, uh, personalities are being reinforced as the main force driving policy. And policy has become increasingly ad hoc. Um, now, this, this sort of arrangement creates a fear, I think, of speaking publicly uh, in the, uh, in, inside the government. Uh, because you, you may damage your relations with the ruler. And you can see this in the dearth of Dubai spokesmen. Uh, there's just nobody that you can call when, uh, when you need information on this place. If there's a story that's breaking or even if you're, you're working on something longer term and you've got, uh, uh, you know, just general questions about a, a topic, there, there isn't really a place to go. Uh, there seems to be just this lack of confidence among people who should be speaking up for Dubai publicly. But perhaps because they don't know the message of the day or, or uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the thinking of the ruler on, on a certain issue hasn't been uh, devolved down to, uh, to people who are in touch with the press. Um, I, you know, I think that there needs to be some sort of consensus-driven body at the highest levels that can formulate these messages and get them down, uh, and turn them into public talking points, and get them down to people who, uh, who can be in touch with the press. Um, uh, you know, it, I think this is... Um, a critical uh, 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 failing, really, on, on Dubai's part. It's, uh, it's sort of a complicated way of saying that when the press calls, you really need to answer the phone. Um, uh, you know, I, Dubai needs a press office, uh, really, where you can call. I mean, this is really the only entity I've ever covered, I think, in my career that didn't have one. Uh, you know, I mean, I remember you know, everything from, you know, it's small town councils to uh, companies, to, you know, to, uh, to, you know, even the, the post-war government of Iraq. They all have people that answer the phones, that make comments. Uh, you know, Dubai needs this as well. Um, they, you know, this staff it with some smart people who have authority to speak and let them make some mistakes, uh, you know, uh, without being fired. Um, you, you can see this um, time and time again, the, 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 uh, how it really hurts the, uh, the city's image. Um, I, I remember in, in 2006, Human Rights Watch came here to release a report, a very critical report, on, uh, on labor, labor issues and labor rights. And uh, it was in a hotel. They had a press conference in a hotel in Media City. Uh, I went, uh, and uh, I think Kamran went with me. And uh, uh, we covered this uh, uh, press conference with every other ma major uh, international news agency that was in town. Uh, it was very well attended. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the speaker was uh, Sarah Leah Whitson. Uh, she, um, she said she was impressed at um, Dubai was so open that it was, you know, she was allowed to come in and speak and, and, and present this, uh, this, this uh, openly critical report. And the only entity that didn't show up was the government, not Dubai or the federal government. And she was speaking that she, uh, how she was dismayed that, uh, that, that the group couldn't get a meeting with the government at all. Uh, they tried over and over to, uh, uh, to, to relay their concerns and get, uh, get Dubai's input. 
and Dubai refused to meet with them. And then after they presented the report, it didn't say a word about it. it didn't issue any kind of defense or explain, you know, any of its labor policy, what it was doing. And it turns out Dubai was actually doing things. I mean, it was, uh, you know, Sheikh Mohammed had toured some labor camps, closed down a whole bunch of them, uh, and there were new, uh, new camps and buildings and housing being built. Uh, but but uh, Dubai didn't say this, uh, and it got hammered in the press. Now, unbelievably, this has just happened again. Uh, there's been a new Human Re Rights Watch report that's, that's come out, and it looks to me, my, I, you know, I haven't examined it that closely, but it looks like the same, it's the same issue over again, uh, that Dubai uh, let this pass without uh, addressing it, and uh, you know, the bad coverage is, uh, is, is, you know, it's just, Dubai is not fighting its corner, and, and it's just letting others control its story. So just to, to the media world, really, it looks like Dubai has just abdicated from its own story. And you know, when you forfeit the microphone, really, you lose control of the message. Uh, you know, you're, you're just letting others speak for you. Uh, and they probably don't have your best interests in mind, really. Um, now, this has gotten worse recently, unfortunately. Uh, you know, when there's trouble, the phones just seem to go dead here. Uh, you know, the, the, the Burj Khalifa is, is, uh, is, a, is an example of that when the, the elevator malfunctioned recently. Um, you know, this is uh, uh, um, the, the, the response to the, uh, the Nakheel debt crisis, you know, being released when it was and no one being available to, uh, to take calls on that, uh, just leaving it open to utter speculation uh, by, by everyone else who, who didn't really know what was happening. Uh, or this new oil strike even, I mean, this is a good news story, but, uh, you know, there's such a lack of information that people are, are distrustful of it. And this, um, the opacity really is just contributing to, to this beating that Dubai is taking in the press. You know, I think people here still haven't, I don't, they're, they're, maybe there's just uh, trouble getting the idea across that bad news is normal. You know, it happens everywhere, and when it happens, it's better for the government to release it in a coherent fashion than hide it which winds up creating a scandal like we saw with the, the, the Burj Khalifa. I mean, if I was a tourist stuck in the Burj Khalifa elevator, I mean, I would know that that was a great story. The first thing I would do when I got off of there, I would, would, I would call the paper, you know, and maybe even the sun would pay for my story, you know. So, of course, this is going to get out. I mean, it, it, it's not, uh, you know, it, it's not something that you can cover up, really. Um, and um, Dubai tends to, to uh, leave its press handling duties to PR agencies, which are okay for, for lobbying in Washington or for certain duties, but not really for handling reporters. I mean, I had a, a, an, an experience. I had to write a story about the, the, the child jockey uh, uh, situation here a couple of years ago, and I couldn't get anybody, as usual, in Dubai to comment on it. Uh, and it was, Dubai was actually happening to do the right thing at this time. It was, it was repatriating these jockeys, and it was getting these mechanical uh, uh, robots to, to, to ride the camels. And um, so I filed the story without any comment. And then as I was just leaving to go home at the end of the day, I got a, the phone rang and I got a call from a PR guy who, calling from Washington, of all places, who was asking me how he could comment on the, the story. And I was like, well, you know, why is this PR agency calling me from Washington? Uh, and he said, well, I'm handling comment for the Dubai government. And I was like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really trust you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're calling from Washington? You're coming on Dubai? No, no thanks. So I didn't, I didn't use any of it. I had already filed my story anyway. And, you know, it's, uh, it was another one-sided story.